Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the show. Chon Tech here. Um, so we're going to talk next about the part of this that's probably one of the more difficult parts of this whole dang circuit board is what it is. Um, that is this uh, U2 chip called the LM324QT. Uh, Q is standing for quad is what this is. Now this is what we would call a series of operational amplifiers. Uh, the purpose of an operational amplifier uh, has, there's so many different things that you can really do with an operational amplifier. Um, mostly they do math. Is probably the easiest way to describe exactly what they do. They do analog electrical math uh, is what they do. Um, but an operational amplifier uh, is in many ways uh, uh, a very versatile and useful circuit that uh, you should study. They are um, there are so many different things that you can really do with them. Uh, they are. Um, used all over the place. Um, now, in the case of this operational amplifier that we're using here, um, there are four operational amplifiers on the inside. There's four things that have two inputs and one output is what they have. Um, they are listed as one, two, three, and four. The inputs have either a plus or a minus, which we would call inverting or non-inverting, if we were to use the technical term, and an output that goes along with it. There is also a VCC, a VCC minus, a VCC plus, which is connect, going to be connected up to power, is where this is. So if you were to follow the trace here, this is actually connected up to VCC power. VCC minus, which is connected up here, down, or down here, down to my ground uh, connection. Um, and then uh, don't worry about all the resistors and other kind of stuff around it right now. Uh, what I actually want to focus on with this video is actually the, uh, the chip. The chip itself. Um, the chip that uh, we chose for this circuit is a little bit more challenging than your standard uh, chip. Um, and uh, so it's actually meant to fit in um, this small uh, area here. You may notice, like, hey, wait a minute, that's C4. That looks like it might be the same size as the other uh, capacitors that we have. Um, and uh, it is. In fact, uh, I'll put one there for you right now. Uh, that is meant to be a place for a, excuse me, I've got a little bit of some fluxing agent on my, excuse me, can you can you come off there? Thank you. I have a, a little bit of some fluxing agent on there. Sorry, that stuck a little bit. Um, the LM324Q2 is what we call a quad flat pack no lead and the QFN is what that is. Now I've got uh, some of them actually loaded it up into a uh, into a piece of uh, uh, tape and reel that I've got and I'm handling this with uh, ESD uh, connected over uh, to my wrist strap here. And so uh, the uh, um, the uh, the uh, op amps that are here uh, here they oof, excuse me they are these little chips that are on the inside of there. I'm going to take the uh, plastic off of the embossed piece of uh, tape and reel, like this guy is right there, um, and there it is. There is a uh, quad flat pack, oof, no lead, oh, oops, chip. So there is the chip, and uh, here is the uh, capacitor, and you will notice that these guys are fairly close to uh, almost being in the same size category as one another. While the capacitor is what we would call a passive component, it only has uh, really one purpose in this, which this capacitor in particular is the bypass capacitor that will help protect the chip. Um, on the underside of this chip, uh, one will notice that there are 16 connections along the outside edge and one center large pad, which is actually going to be connected down to all of the, um, all of the parts that they are uh, down over here. Now, um, there is also, um, if one were to tilt this chip in just the right way, there are some letters and numbers that are on the uh, that are on the chip. Ah, would you please let go of that? Oh my goodness gracious! I'm gonna take a little bit of some uh, isopropyl alcohol here and uh, kind of wipe down my tweezers just a little bit uh, so I can get rid of that some of that fluxing agent. So there we go. Now the dot that is on this chip is actually meant to align up with the dot that is on the silk screen. So if one were to look at this, this part is actually meant is actually meant to be placed right there inside that square. There is almost no room to get a soldering iron in to get underneath those pads uh, to be able to put this part down. So this QFN part actually has to be put down in a very particular way, uh, which we're going to do uh, right now. So let me take that capacitor, kind of move it out of the way, and show you how to solder attach a QFN chip. Uh, is what we are going to do uh, using both a soldering iron as well as a uh, hot air pen. Uh, first and foremost, for doing uh, QFN type packages, um, and I, I, I actually I, I am well aware there are probably many, many or more 
larger magnitudes of orders of more dangerous chips to be able to put down and connectors and all kinds of other stuff with it here um so uh let me know what those are like, leave a little comment down in there tell me what's the worst nightmare chip that you've ever had to put down is it this one or is it something else so i've got some fluxing agent and i'm going to very technical term for the flux we're putting down all over it there. And I'm going to use a slightly different soldering iron. This is a micro tip, Hako micro tip soldering iron um, that's going to be used. Now, I'm going to be using some lead based solder. Uh, in fact, actually, what I'm going to use is some of the uh, thinner stuff that I've actually got on here so here is the uh, size of the uh, of the wire and actually let me kind of zoom in a little bit more close closely so you can kind of see a little bit more about this so using the soldering iron i'm going to come in which is set to 600 degrees fahrenheit still uh for the micro tip the knife micro tip i like the, the, the knife micro tip i'm going to activate some of this and now i'm going to tin every single pad on the outside edge of my qfn see all that See all that? Those guys are, well, no, you can't see all of that because I moved myself off the screen. I am actually not kind of clamped in place right now. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just very gently putting a little bit of some solder along the outside parts. The fluxing agent is what makes this easy. The fluxing agent is absolutely critical for being able to uh, do this part uh, correctly. W without the fluxing agent, um, you are doomed. <laughs> it might be the right way of phrasing it there. Now, I have a little bit of some solder left behind. I'm going to apply that. That's actually, that's probably too much is what I've got there. I've got too much on the center. That's the true trick to being able to do QFNs is to not use that much on uh, the center pad. Um, I might be able to get away with that in the general sense, but I'm actually going to be kind of smart here and just use a little bit of some of my wick and uh, heat up my wick here and take away just some, not all, but some of that solder, which happens to just be on the center pad there. I, I, I want to leave, leave some there. You need, you do need some uh, solder material there. You, you, you absolutely do need some solder material there because that's the centering mechanism uh, for the, uh, that's the centering mechanism for the, uh, uh, the way that the uh, uh, QFN chip is actually going to align itself up uh, uh, is what it is. So, um, the, uh, so now, uh, at this point, uh, I've got everything kind of covered over with, uh, with solder paste here. I'm going to turn off the soldering iron just because the micro tip, I'm not using the correct handle for it right now. Um, at this point now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the hot air pen um, and uh, gently heat up the solder that's underneath here. Um, and allow it to connect up uh, to the chip and just watch it kind of flow itself uh, into place uh, is what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to use a temperature of, oh, let's just call it uh, maybe 275 degrees uh, C and an airflow of, let's just say, 70% uh, is what we'll have it um, using my, uh, my quick uh, uh, 861 DW uh, 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 soldering uh, my uh, hot gun. Is what it is. Actually, what I'm gonna do first, you might be able to see right now that the uh, area is kind of a, a burnt color, uh, is what it looks like. So I'm going to use a um, Q-tip and a little bit of some uh, cleaning solution and clean off the uh, fluxing agent material that was left over from uh, tinning all the pads. You can see now it looks uh, much much nicer. Um, when doing chips like this, it's useful to just take everything that you can possibly use. That does that probably doesn't look the nicest nice in the world. In fact, it probably you know what? Let's let's try and do a little bit, little bit of a better job uh, with that um, with that particular uh, cleaning. There we go. It's a uh, uh, much much better. That's what we have. I'll take a little bit of a wipe here as well. Wipe the surface off. There. It's looking nice. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think that looks nice? You think it looks nice? Looks think it looks nicer? Leave a comment in the uh, parts below if you think that looks nicer. You know, or leave a comment for anything really with it on there. Um, okay, so um, here's how this is actually going to work. So first thing I'm going to use is I am going to use a um, a heat glove. And there's my one heat glove. Do I have the other heat glove? I have just one glove. I'm the electronic Michael Jackson. 
or someone else that's probably famous that wore a glove. I don't know. I'm not really uh, that uh, knowledgeable in that kind of stuff or anything like that. There we go. Here's my other uh, kind of a heat glove is what they are. ESD heat gloves. Very, very important. I don't want to burn myself. And safety is critical when doing something like this. So now that I've got my ESD heat gloves on, I'm going to take my board, uh, put that so that it's in kind of the center of it here. Um, I'm going to be holding the chip with um, my right hand. Um, now, I am going to be very carefully resting the chip with my right hand and trying to keep this as still as possible while hot air blows on the uh, on the board. So I'm going to heat this up with the board, preheat it up with the um, with the uh, hot air gun, um, which I'm currently uh, holding in my uh, in my hand right now. I'm going to preheat this up with the uh, hot air gun by putting it about uh, two or three inches away. It's up at 275 at 70 percent or 70 percent airflow. Um, now I'm going to come. Oh, I, I forgot something. I forgot something very, very important for being able to do this correctly. So I'm actually going to put this back down again. Fluxing agent. You need fluxing agent here at this point. Um, it will help out tremendously. So put down a whole bunch of fluxing agent, which it might spread out just a little bit there. Uh, make sure that that's all in a nice spot. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to try do this again here. There we go. So I have the chip in the right hand, and I have the polarity marked correctly. I can see the polarity marker, the dot that's on the uh, that's on the chip. While I preheat the board up, preheat the chip up as well. And now I am heating this up and providing a gentle waving motion of the of the hot air pen. And I am seeing. Oh, well, I let go too soon. That's what I did. Can you come back here for a second? There we go. Let's try that again, please. There we go. And I am now heating the chip up again. I have noticed that the solder has gone to melt. See that? And the solder is kind of helping to hold this thing into place. And now very, very carefully, I'm going to kind of nudge this thing around while I continue to wave the... Um, this guy, you see how I can like push it and it kind of moves back to the center again, like that? That's the center pad. Now, if you have done the center pad correctly with a small amount, but a good amount of solder, now my, uh, back in the cradle again, my hot air pen is cooling back down. I'm going to let my circuit board, uh, cool back down, uh, as well, uh, before we give it a little bit of an inspection. Um, because, uh, if I have done it correctly, the hot air pen, uh, will heat up all 17 pads, the 16 around the edge and then the center one uh, as well. Um, and that will cause the QFN chip uh, to be able to move in towards the center because there is a, uh, if the solder is good and if the flux is good as well, there is a centering mechanism while solder is in its liquid form due to the fact that it's a liquid and trying to form a surface tension based bond uh, with the materials that are next to it. Um, now, uh, with, that, uh, with that in mind, the uh, um, center pad if it has just the right amount, we'll kind of lock it in the center and allow all the rest of the smaller pads to link up. But if there's too much solder on that center pad, the chip is either going to sit up too high and not make contact with any of the 16 pins on the outside, or you, you're like me, and you, you push it down, and the solder just spreads, and it creates what we call a series of short circuits underneath the, uh, underneath the chip. Um, is what it does. And uh, that's really not a lot of fun if uh, something like that um, starts to happen with this. But now at this point, the uh, chip is uh, connected into place. And so let's uh, let's have a closer look on the edges. That's what we want to look at. For If we've done this correctly, you can still see the edge of a QFN chip. So I'm going to start looking at the first edge here. And I see that it's at least aligned up uh, correctly there. Pros that are good at this probably can do a, a much, much a better job than what I can do with it. Uh, I'm going to look at the second edge. That looks aligned up too. That's good. I'm going to look at the third third edge, if I can find it. There you are. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, hey. Well, one of them is definitely not connected, but aligned, uh, which is good. Um, I can apply my soldering iron, which I'm going to do here in just a second, along the edge of all four parts of that chip. Now, this last edge is going to be somewhat hard to get to because it is the uh, uh, largest part uh, of the board. Where is it? Hi, how are you? Can I look at you, please? Focus all the way up, and that is, well, that looks aligned for the most part to me. Yeah, 
That is aligned. It's aligned up to the pads there, but it's sort of not connected all the way. So what we're going to do next, and it may have just been like not enough heat or not enough airflow provided by the hot air pen. Could be a couple of things uh, associated with that. Um, but what I'm going to do with this now is I am going to take some fluxing agent, such as what I got with it right here, align it along the edge of the uh, of the chip, turn my soldering iron uh, back on again, uh, which is the knife edge, and you're probably going to see one of the reasons why I really like to use this, uh, this particular uh, soldering iron. I'm going to take a little bit of some spare solder that I've got just kind of sitting here and tin the tip up just a, just a little bit. And then um, with the camera rolling, I'm going to come down with the uh, knife edge and just sort of touch the tips of each one of the QFN. There we go. And I see two connections on there for sure. This also could be from just there not being enough of a uh, connection, enough material on the base of the uh, of the uh, QFN. I'm going to take just a little bit of some solder. That's a little bit too much solder is what that is there. Excuse me. And then hit that last one right there. And there you have it. There's four of them that are connected up. Let's do the uh, bottom ones, the first ones that we started uh, uh, looking at. Hi, that's my hand. <laughs> And uh, we'll come down here, down to the next one. Looking good. Uh, applying flux. Fluxing agent is uh, fluxing agent is our friend for doing surface mount. That's one of those. Uh, I, I forgot where I heard that from. Uh, all sorts of many years back. But the fluxing agent is truly, truly, truly the secret sauce to being able to process uh, surface mount type devices. The wrong flux um, can also. Uh, hurt you in uh, many, many ways. Um, the wrong flux can make things uh, difficult to work with, in some cases uh, darn near impossible sometimes to, uh, to work with uh, under, the, uh, under the right scenario with this. So and I'm going to come down and hit uh, you, 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 and a you, a one, a two, a three, a something. How old is that? They're probably still showing that commercial somewhere, you know. That's the, the owl is what that is. From uh, Tootsie somethings, something like that. I don't know, something I haven't had in uh, in quite a while. Can you see what I just did there? I put some flexing H down on all the uh, all the pins. I'm going to, hey, 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 hey. And now at this point, um, all four of the uh, pins have been applied with uh, some flexing agent. I'm going to take the uh, Q-tip that I was using the uh, the last time here and uh, clean up the all the parts of the circuit board that I actually had uh, kind of messed up the last time. I think my Q-tip has just about, oof, excuse me, <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't aware, I wasn't showing what I was looking at right there. I think my Q-tip is just about spent uh, here. It's just about, this is actually, believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, if you've been following my channel for the last um, <laughs> week, <laughs> this is actually the, uh, the same Q-tip that I was looking at uh, not too long ago. So uh, this Q-tip has, uh, um, this Q-tip is now brown bread is what that is. So I'm going to grab a, a different one that I've got here, a little bit more of a uh, not so standard in the bathroom one, and uh, clean the sides here, clean the top, clean the top, and there you have it. Clean it kind of around the edges of it here. Just make sure I've got all the fluxing agent off and that hair that's off with it there. Top of the chip looks a little bit yucky, but hey, that's okay. So that is how you apply a QFN, uh, oof, can you let go please? I've got a little bit of flexing agent on the edges of the board there. Uh, that is how you apply a QFN, a quad flat pack no league, down to a printed circuit board. Uh, do you like what you're seeing with that there? Uh, or do you have any questions with there? Let me know in the comments uh, uh, below there, and uh, we'll see you on the next video here. All right, see you around.